love how I started just coming outside. I was like, oh, I just want to see what's going on. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. <laughs> Shout out to you for knowing that this is not YouTube, but real life. So you can speak back to me. I can hear you. Also, shout out to uh, Speak Easy, House of Speak Easy, for hosting me on the night that my book was born. So. But wait, it's a burst. It's a book purse. Because <laughs> I hate when my books get messed up in my bag. So I made a book purse that can fit all books. So I literally checked every book that's outside can fit in this one bag. You're welcome. <laughs> never say never. Um, I am not going to dance, Joshua. Can't keep up. Um, and I'm not uh, as funny as Sister Sally. I'm sorry. I, I have a dirty mouth, so my funny is different. But when I think of Never Say Never, I think of how I came to New York City in the first place. Because I thought, as someone who was born and raised in Oakland, California, that I was never moving to Brooklyn. <laughs> New York, never. Refuse it. And 23 years later, after my summer residency ended, I'm still here. So that's the first lie. Never Say Never did not work for me. I am forever um, a, a, a citizen of New York City. And it just became one of those things for me where I was like, oh, so the Never Say Never is like the year of yes with Oprah. Uh, <laughs> it is, it's just, you just, just walk into the fear as Audre Lorde said, and so I do. And the story I think I wanna share with you is how Chrome Valley even came to be. Anybody have debt from college? Shout out to you. Anybody paid off their debt from college? Shout out to you. Any, anybody get scholarships for college? Shout out to you. Anybody going back to college, lifelong student? Shout out to you too. So, Chrome Valley began as my dissertation in an MFA program and uh, I was told that I would never, um, or in that moment when I reached out to an editor, I didn't have a, a voice because I didn't have a, a real audience member that they knew by face. And I said, well, look at my face. I buy books. And they said, yeah, but no. And so I just thought, okay, this is gonna be, if I wanna be a poet in New York City, this is gonna be my life. And um, before I gave up on writing, uh, before I gave up on publishing, before I gave up on uh, performing, um, I called my partner and I told him what the editor said. And the first thing he said was, um, he, okay, they don't wanna publish you, that's, that's fine. People don't have to publish you, you can publish yourself. It's like, no, I can't, I can't do that. No one takes it seriously. And he said, or they do, <laughs> because look at Jessica Care Moore, look at Haki Matabuti, look at Sister Sonia Sanchez, look at Nikki Giovanni, look at Audre Lorde. Like these people put out pamphlets at a point in time because their work, uh, someone said no to their work and their work was that important to them. So you can do it too. And I said, well, you don't listen to me enough. <laughs> Gotta call somebody else. So I did. And then they said what he said. And I said, you're also not listening. <laughs> not talking to you either. Um, and so that's when I signed up for this MFA program, right? Within 10 years of the no, no thank you, not you, not that voice, not that story. Um, all the while, I'm hosting the New Eureka Poets Cafe, which is the longest running poetry venue in the country. Thank you. Um, all the while, I'm teaching in schools, New York City schools. Them joints are scary, right? And they're not scary because of the kids. Let's be clear, they're scary because of the building. <laughs> you walk in, you're like, 
am I supposed to be? Do you want me to teach here? What's happening? So all this is say, all the no's were coming, and the whole time I had an audience of hundreds, of thousands. And so I'd like to read the poem where I thought I would never have the opportunity to read this piece because even after that editor said no, I kept pushing. And then 10 more editors said no. Um, and then I had a beautiful writing retreat because there are still people that are saying yes, right? You get caught up in the no's instead of looking at who's saying yes. And sometimes the no is just not now. It's in a minute, focus. So I kept publishing myself and I went to these residencies and I went to these writing retreats and um, I have the, the, the real blessing of calling these amazing writers my friends and comrades and teachers. So after a uh, residency at Poets House and Ocean Vuong was my fellow, after a residency at Kabe Kanam and uh, Anastasia Renee is my fellow and Terrence Hayes is my fellow and Nicole Seeley is my fellow, I took the book back, I took the no back. And I edited the shit out of this. And it got into a slight bidding war, right? Never say what? <laughs> never say never. And after three long, scary days, um, I got a two book deal with Live Right Norton, and this book is now in the world. <laughs> Word. Thank you. And so I feel really bad because, like I said, I don't have a dance, I don't have a funny moment, I just have um, these really nice shoes that match the undercurrent. You didn't see it coming, huh? You didn't see it. Oh, that could be a dance. That could happen, okay. Um, that's all I got, that's all I got. And I got my me, which is enough, right? Which is enough, we are enough. So House of Speakeasy, thank you for the, allowing me to share uh, the reason that I walked into um, every no, every single no, every single door that closed um, they just reminded me that um, if the door closes, there's a window. And if the window closes, get a rock. <laughs> and I'd like to leave you with this poem. Chrome Haunt. They stole the car. You get ready. You turn into your father so quick. The cul-de-sac calls you out your name when you sleep. You wake with a seance crusted in your eyes. They all know when you got a wrong decision to make. Word get along like wind. That's how the block knows everything. Yeah, that's how Stratford knows. Yeah, that's how Poplar knows. Street names colored in tree sap sermon. Maybe that's why the sun's so hot or why the water's so ice. That's why the drug boys whistle. That's why you sleep late. That's why you skip breakfast. That's why your knees jerk and brush against the gat silent in your lap. Your fingers slide against the life drainer. Then your fingers don't move at all. You begin to wrap your knuckles against the door. The screen just a singing like an old friend. Black, black marbles peek out. They ain't here. They ain't got it. They gone. You almost smile. They can't see your hands, but they know you real. Your gapped haunt opening. And now they scared. Whew. They scared to hear you laugh. So laugh at the no, y'all. You made it. <laughs>